This is Rick Wiles. He is a far right figure who has a TV show called True News on DirecTV and Dish Network and everything you can imagine. Like, he's out there. He has an, some extremely concerning and weird views. Doesn't like Jews at all, first of all. That's a concerning view he holds. He's a mega Christian. This guy also believes that the vaccine has a synthetic parasite in it, and they basically they inject an egg into your bloodstream, and it hatches into a synthetic parasite. I mean, the dude is absolutely unhinged. I, I don't know what other word to use to describe this guy, to be perfectly honest. Here, just watch this clip real quick. This is a global coup d'etat by the most evil cabal of people on the planet in the history of mankind. And if it is not stopped in the very near future, they will win. That's what's at stake, control of the world. They're planting, they're putting eggs in people's bodies. We, if you didn't see yesterday's True News, you need to watch it. Seriously, that's the level that we're at with this guy. That's who Rick Wiles is. I just wanted to give you a little background on him before we jump into this. Now, this is part two, technically. You don't have to see part one to understand what's happening here. I'll give the context if it's missing. In the last part, the guy was making the case that Donald Trump's mansion, Mar-a-Lago, was searched by the FBI because he had incriminating evidence on the FBI that he declassified before leaving office. And as soon as he left office, Biden reclassified it, which made that incriminating evidence illegal to own and that's why the fbi rushed in and took it from him basically it's nonsensical for a number of reasons but let me just give you a couple we know that it was nuclear information in those documents that trump stole from the government first of all second why didn't trump just release the information in the first place and third it's not declassified until the documents have the classified header and footer removed from the page and the header and footer was still on the documents that trump had when you declassify something the document that you declassified has to be reproduced with those header and footers removed the original is still classified because it says classified on it but the new the copy with the header and footer removed is no longer classified you're supposed to shred the original if you completely declassify documents but donald trump had full-blown, classified, top-secret-slash-secret-compartmented information right there next to the towels at his Mar-a-Lago mansion. So, anyway, so many holes to poke in this, I don't even know where to start, but that's what Rick Wiles has been saying up to this point. You should be pretty caught up on this now. Let's listen and see what he has to say. Personal stake in searching for classified documents related to its Spygate scandal. There you go. The real reason the FBI raided the Trump home, they wanted to get the documents he has that can send them to prison. Right. No, no, that's complete delusion. I don't understand why people are so convinced that people like Greg Locke and Donald Trump and others, when they claim they have documents that are incriminating to other people, I don't understand why they actually believe that. Seriously, if they had incriminating documents, they should turn those documents over to whoever, release them to the public. You think Trump would have incriminating documents on the FBI for two years and wouldn't have turned it over by now? You think Greg Locke would have incriminating evidence on Kenneth Copeland, as he claims to, and not turn it over by now? Really? You are the most gullible sucker alive, if you believe that. He has that can send them to prison. Right. I told you years ago, the race is on to see who goes to prison first, the crooks or President Trump. And so the battle continues. Now, the next one. Um, the Why is there a race? There shouldn't be a race. Just if you have incriminating evidence, then turn it over to the public, to anybody, just whoever. Turn it over. They live in a delusion. Um, this is a tweet uh, just before suspension. This is uh, Paul Sperry. Right. And in this particular tweet, he started naming names. I have never heard of Paul Sperry before. don't know why he's relevant or important at all or 
how he would know these names that he supposedly named. That were involved in the Mar-a-Lago raid. So conflicted DOJ officials because there was. Uh, so is he is this is Paul Sperry doxing people? Is that what he's doing? I have no idea who these people are or what they're doing. I mean, I know that the FBI agents were eventually doxed and, and their families and everything by absolutely terrible people. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they're talking about here, but that is deeply, deeply depraved in so many ways. I may censor this out later. Remark a report earlier that there were conflicted DOJ officials uh, regarding the raid. Mm -hmm. He starts naming those conflicted DOJ officials. He happened to work with Hunter Biden and Michael Sussman's criminal attorneys. That name's come up in our uh, past. Obama aide implicated in Russiagate. Wife of top Biden aide implicated also in Russiagate. So okay, they're building their whole case off of the premise that the Russia investigation was a hoax or like a scandal. It was not. The Russia probe, the Mueller probe and Crossfire Hurricane and everything, all of that stuff implicated Donald Trump and 34 other people, and that's why those 34 people got indictments. It was not a hoax. This was real shit. The Russia probe was. And from my understanding, the only reason that Mueller didn't recommend indictment for Donald Trump is because he didn't believe that presidents should be indicted. That he thought there was a separate process, which was impeachment. But Donald Trump was implicated in this whole thing. Don't let him fool you. Everything that they're saying here is complete nonsense and intended to give Trump the most charitable position possible here. When in reality, Donald Trump is an absolute monster and stole nuclear documents. That's just what it is. So, uh, I guess who's Paul investigating these people? John Durham. Yes. Again, John Durham is nobody special, but they are absolutely convinced that he is like overturning something, something, something. John Durham is like a prosecutor, if you're unfamiliar with this. I talked about it in the last one, but he's a prosecutor who submitted some information about when people were gathering intel and Donald Trump's campaign got caught up in that intel. They were gathering intel on Russian spies that were like spying on people. And for some reason, members of Donald Trump's campaign kept like calling their targets and having conversations with them. And they were like weirded out and confused. And uh, that's when they started looking into why Donald Trump's campaign officials were so deeply involved with people who were very obviously Russian spies. That was the whole investigation. So anyway, he's just twisting it around to make it look like, you know, Donald Trump is just this innocent guy and the government is this big evil thing that's trying to take everybody out. It's just insane, dude. It's insane. This is, the FBI raid is connected to the Durham investigation, not to help Mr. Durham, but to stop him. Right. What is he talking about? Because Durham is on the trail of the corrupt FBI and corrupt Department of Justice. They believe that John Durham is like this hero of theirs, of the far right, that's going to take down the deep state and everything because he's looking into how Russiagate, blah, blah, blah. No, dude, the guy tried, Durham tried to distance himself from the far right interpretations of what he was doing. This is completely insane. Completely insane. A special investigator. But in this case, they carried out a raid to block a special investigator because they're the ones being investigated. And John Durham is on their trail. Now, this is, a, this is the biggest scandal since the murder of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. Oh, no, because he thinks that Martin Luther King Jr. and John F. Kennedy were murdered by the CIA. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, well, it's not as crazy in Martin Luther King Jr.'s case, but John F. Kennedy, oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God, this guy is something else. I love this to death. This is the biggest scandal since the assassination of Kennedy and King. This is huge. And it will blow the lid off the huge, massive 
corrupt spy operation in Washington that has been spying on not only politicians, but Americans, American citizens for many, many years. Well, that's true enough. I mean, we have the documents to prove that the NSA and other organizations have been spying on American citizens for like ever. That's that was leaked. But to claim that Donald Trump is the biggest victim in all of this, this is absolutely nuts, dude. This is nuts. And the sad part is that this guy is on DirecTV and Dish Network and Verizon and all of it. He is extremely influential in, like, just a period, generally. He's extremely influential. It's disturbing stuff, man. Uh, so what well, happened? Let's take a look at... Uh, well, one more tweet oh, yeah. they had, too, and this is probably what got him. He's, uh, so he uh, said, funny, I don't remember the FBI raiding Chappaqua or Whitehaven to find the 33,000 potentially classified documents Hillary Clinton deleted, and she was just a former Secretary of State, not a former president. And so she invoked... See, this is fascinating. The interesting thing is the documents that Donald Trump took, first of all, they're justifying what Hillary Clinton did. They're saying, well, if you're a, if you can't be upset over Donald Trump because you're not upset over Hillary, that seems to me that implies that we shouldn't be upset over Hillary or Donald Trump, right? They were like the far right was deeply, deeply upset over Hillary's emails. In fact, I made a video about it recently called Buttery Males. A couple of guys standing around with sticks of butter, you know, rubbing it all over. Because that's all I heard. Butter emails, butter emails, you know? It was constant. They're just always talking about her emails. Um, and suddenly they don't care. Suddenly they don't care about the fact that classified documents were mishandled. Now, what Hillary did was nowhere near this level, not even close, okay? Hillary Clinton's email servers were actually pretty secure. Aside from the fact that they're, you know, they were pretty secure, she never had information in those that was as sensitive as as what Donald Trump had. Not even close. The guy had stuff so sensitive that it should never be on the internet, ever. TS slash SCI should never leave a room. It should only ever be discussed in a very specific room. It would never be found on an email server. But, you know, keep talking about buttery mails. Uh, yeah, Paul uh, Sperry invoked the Clinton name. And what happened next? Well, guess what? This is actually his second. Well, that's because he was doxing people, obviously, and propagandizing and spreading lives and stuff. So, yeah, doesn't surprise me that his account was suspended. Rightfully so. Time being suspended from Twitter. It's not so. that bad, Paul. Yeah. I'm, I'm permanently kicked out. Uh, True News got kicked out of uh, Twitter. Uh, we got kicked out of YouTube. We got kicked out of Facebook. Who? Good, good. I'm glad. That, that makes me happy. I'm glad to hear that this guy is no longer like... He's basically like InfoWars in the sense that he spreads complete conspiracy theories that are unhinged from reality. And when he's removed from these websites or whatever... He cries about being persecuted nonstop. And some of his conspiracy theories are even crazier than InfoWars, in my opinion. Like, the, the synthetic egg that hatches into a parasite, that one's up there. That one is probably one of the craziest that, that I've ever heard, I think. Who cares? I, I'm proud of it. So Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're proud of that. Uh, don't, don't take it hard, uh, Paul. Um, there are other outlets out there that will uh, report the truth. So uh, Twitter showed their hand. Yes. So when they shut you down, that means you're telling the truth. You're on this. No. Wow. They shut down a bunch of Nazi accounts, too, didn't they, a while back? Were those accounts telling the truth, too? This line of logic blows me away, dude. Something. And that's what got us looking into this. Uh, in the remaining minutes we have here, and again, if you're watching on on cable television or direct TV, uh, we will be signing off in about four minutes, but you can watch the rest of the program at truenews.com uh, if you can handle the truth. If <laughs> That's where we're watching it, so we'll get to see the whole thing. You don't like truth, uh, you don't want to watch any more of this because it might make you um, uncomfortable. Because 
No, I do. I do want to watch more of this. I'm excited for it. You have to face the fact that we have a very corrupt government in Washington. Extremely corrupt. In fact, it's more than corrupt. It's evil. It's wicked. And Christians, Christians must confront it. What makes me so upset is the timidity, the cowardliness of so many preachers in this country. I think it's cowardice, not cowardliness, but that's neither here nor there. Who will not confront this evil in the land. They allow it to go on because they're afraid of it. They don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, I'm not going to be that way. I've got 10 grandchildren, and I am not going to turn uh, my grandchildren into uh, adulthood and say, go for it. There it is. Uh, we couldn't do anything about it. You'll have to live with this corrupt government. God, I feel so bad for his grandchildren and for his children. That's really sad. Pop Pop is a complete conspiracy theorist. Uh, you'll have to let this evil beast destroy your life. Now, I was born a free man in this country, and I will die as a free man, and I will not live under this tyranny that we have in this country right now. It okay, no one is trying to take your freedom or put you under a tyrannical whatever. Just, God, this is nuts, right? Is it just me? This is insane. It's a communist takeover of the United States of America. These people are communists. They act like communists. They talk like communists. They're communists. Which people, first of all, which people are we talking about? He's using weasel words. He says, these people. Which ones? Specifically, and also, what sounds like communism to you? What is this thing that they're saying that sounds like communism? I don't understand. And they're destroying the freedom and liberty of this country. I only got two minutes remaining before the break. This next story is from Newsweek. An informer told the FBI what docs Trump was hiding and where. How about that? An informer. Okay, I don't know how true that is, first of all. Donald Trump seems to think that's the case, and that's why he's trying to get the affidavit unsealed. But I don't. I feel like that's not completely solid yet. Maybe by the time you see this release on my channel, you'll know one way or another, but I'm not really sure that this isn't entirely true. Uh, aside from that, I find it fascinating that implied by this article title is the idea that Donald Trump really did take documents he was not supposed to have, seems to me. How about a spy? Yes. How about the FBI had a spy? Sure, a spy for the U.S. government. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with that characterization. Fine. Well, spy actually has a very specific meaning to it, though. So you can't just go around and call anybody a spy for any reason. You know, there, there's a difference between an informant and a spy. And this article is specifically referring to them as an informer, not a spy. So I guess that's not the right word, most likely. Inside the Trump home. In fact, it names it. It says it's an FBI confidential human source. That's called a spy. Right. So the raid on Mar-a-Lago was based largely on information from an FBI confidential human source who was able to identify what classified documents former President Trump was still hiding and even the location of those documents, two senior government officials told Newsweek. How about this one? Check this out. I watched a video from Eric Trump the other day on stream, like yesterday, I think. And he specifically said that the Washington Post, I think, leaked that it was the nuclear codes that Donald Trump had, among other things. Which, you know, first of all, no, they didn't. That, that was never leaked. I find it fascinating that... Eric and Donald Trump Jr. both now are talking about, you know, their dad having the nuclear codes, among other nuclear secrets, at Mar-a-Lago. But that just completely destroys Rick Wiles' whole premise, his whole idea that the FBI raided his house because Trump had incriminating evidence on him. If he really did have anything nuclear-related, which it sounds like he likely did, the FBI was completely right completely right to search his home for it and take it back. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them doing that in any way. But Rick Wiles is obsessed with finding conspiracies in absolutely anything and portraying Trump as a victim. 
the officials who have direct knowledge of the FBI's deliberations and were granted anonymity in order to discuss the sensitive matters said the raid of Donald Trump's Florida residence was deliberately timed to occur when the former president was away. The effort to keep the raid low-key failed. Okay, who are they quoting here? Who's quote, who are, who is being quoted? I don't know who they're talking about or where they found this information, supposedly. Was this from Newsweek? One thing I've learned about watching Rick Wiles, though, is do not trust a single word out of the guy's mouth not one there is nothing trustworthy about the guy i don't know that he deliberately lies about things i don't know maybe he does but he is willing to believe anything he's a conspiracy theorist to the core he will believe anything and it doesn't matter what the source is he low-key failed instead it prompted a furious response from gop leaders and trump supporters what a spectacular backfire says the justice official I know that there is much speculation out there that this is political persecution, but, but it is really the best and the worst of bureaucracy in action, the official said. They wanted to punctuate the fact that this was a routine law enforcement action stripped of any political overtones, and yet they got exactly the opposite. Uh, it says that they were trying to avoid any media circus. A uh, senior intelligence official who was briefed on the investigation and the operation. So even though everything made sense bureaucratically and the FBI feared that the documents might be destroyed, they also created the very firestorm they sought to avoid in ignoring the fallout. Um, first thing I see in there, they scheduled, they planned the raid when he wouldn't be there. Where was he? He was in New York at a deposition, but aside from that, I don't know that that's even true. Like, we have to take everything with a grain of salt that we hear on this show, seriously. This show is deeply, deeply untrustworthy in every way. He was in New York. You know why? He had been subpoenaed by whom? Letitia James, the That's attorney right. general of New York. She's even more conspiracies. Part of this operation. She drew him out with a subpoena. He had a legal subpoena that was like signed off by a judge and everything like this stuff is difficult to get. This takes time. This isn't something that just anybody can send to your front door and force you to come. You have to go through legal channels to get this stuff done. And this guy deeply, deeply believes that there's this conspiracy where a prosecutor coordinated with the FBI to get Trump out of state, as if Trump doesn't like go out of state on his own all the time anyways. To go to New York to answer questions. Like Donald Trump doesn't leave Mar-a-Lago literally ever. Right? Doesn't he go to rallies? Why not schedule it over top of a rally? She's part of this raid. Wow. They set him up. So she has her own little corrupt investigation going, and they worked this out together. They knew when he would have to leave mar lago and go to New York, how long. Do you see how he's spinning up a conspiracy right now? This is how he does it. He, he takes little facts, little pieces of information, and builds it into a big elaborate story that incriminates everybody along the way. It's insane how he does this. Insane. He would be there. All right. There's a lot more, and we're going to talk about it uh, when we return after the close of the program. Again, for those of you watching on DirecTV and cable television, we invite you to come over to truenews.com, watch the rest of this program, and hear the truth. We love you very much. We will be back here tomorrow. I love your mom very much. Welcome okay, back. True News family, we're back, okay? Um, so we're, uh, we're doing this uh, program this way now. Uh, we're going to test it for a few weeks and see what kind of reaction we get. Um, we survived our first day. Um, <laughs> We went out on hundreds of cable systems and DirecTV, and uh, we've not had a cancellation notice as of uh, right now. So I guess I guess we made it for one day. Right. Uh, this aired on August 10th, guys, and this guy is currently actively right now on DirecTV, Dish Network. If you have cable TV, you're paying this guy to create conspiracy theories about all kinds of crazy stuff, like synthetic 
eggs hatching in your body and stuff. No joke. We got to get this guy taken off cable TV. Seriously. Uh, so this will be day two that you're watching. This, what you're watching now will, will go out tomorrow on DirecTV. And uh, again, a lot of uh, cable television stations. Uh, we're on uh, the Word Network. And we are very, very happy that the owner of the Word Network has been very courageous and said um, he believes in free speech. And he says, you have you have the opportunity to present your case on our network okay yeah i believe in free speech too but coming from a background of being a cult member and trying to destroy cults the way that i do there has to be a limitation on how much conspiracy theory is allowed on a tv network like you have to be able to limit this to some degree you have to it's nuts so we're taking him up on his uh, on his word, and we're very appreciative. That's more than we can say for TCT, okay? Um, but that's, that's another matter. I want to go back to the story we just read about the informer. Okay, so they, the FBI planted a spy. Doc, it's not like... The FBI, there is no reason to believe that the FBI planted a spy. See, this guy is saying it as though it's true. He's saying it in a definitive way. There's no evidence of this. This is all just part of his conspiracy theory, plain and simple. Maid called a hotline and said, hey, I'm a maid. I work in Donald Trump's house. He's got classified documents in here, and I can tell you where they're at. No, that's not what happened. The FBI... How do you know that's not what happened? How do you know? The guy's just out here saying whatever, just because. He had a spy. And apparently right? a high-level spy. A high-level spy that they managed to get into his employment that had close access to him. That's who was reporting to the FBI. Proves what they did to him before when they denied that they spied on him. They're still spying on him. And what were they after? <laughs> okay, it wasn't spying on him before, okay? I, I talked about this in the last one, too. Let me just give you a basic rundown. There's a thing called Crossfire Hurricane. During the 2015 presidential campaigns, when Trump was running for office, the FBI was spying on Russian operatives who were operating within the United States. And weirdly, a weird number of conversations kept coming up where Donald Trump's campaign members were talking with these Russian operatives. Like, why is the Trump campaign having conversations with these Russian spies? This is weird. That is when an investigation started into why the Trump campaign was communicating with these Russian spies, these known Russian operatives. That's when they started Crossfire Hurricane. And it was completely justified when it happened. The investigation, it officially ended immediately after Trump took office. And because Trump brought an end to it, fired James Comey and brought an end to the investigation. That's what triggered the Mueller probe, the, you know, the Mueller investigation, which led to 34 indictments of Russians who were getting involved in the election to some degree. So the, the Russia thing was not a hoax in any way, and Donald Trump's campaign officials were working with Russians. In fact, Donald Trump was indirectly working with the Russians. This is not a hoax. The fact that he believes it, it's a hoax and is coming out here on DirecTV and Dish Network and Verizon TV and everything and saying it is absolutely disgusting to me. They were after the binder. Now, they said they wanted to... Oh, yeah. So there is a binder, supposedly. According to Rick Wiles, there's a binder that contained all of the crossfire hurricane information about how the FBI was researching why Donald Trump was involved with all of these Russian people, right? And his claim is that Donald Trump took the binder, declassified Crossfire Hurricane after leaving office, took the binder with him as evidence against these FBI officials that they were doing this thing or that thing or whatever else. And as soon as he left office, Biden reclassified. Now, none of this is true. This is all completely made up in his mind but he's espousing it as though it's a real is it like it's a fact he's saying it like it's a fact so he thinks trump took this binder 
when he left office, Biden reclassified the binder of information and then raided his home in retaliation just because he hates Donald Trump. He lives in a delusional fantasy land. After they were, they were after the binder. Now, they said they wanted to go there and they had the, the reason that the courageous FBI agents went there, went there with their machine guns was to stop. Uh, did he expect the FBI to show up w just with their fists, with boxing gloves and fight Trump like a real man, get in the ring and Donald Trump boxes them for the documents? Like, what does he expect from them? I, I don't understand. Donald Trump from destroying classified information. No, they went there to destroy classified, classified information. information. You got it. The only thing the FBI investigates are people who know about crimes. Are you kidding me? This is insane, dude. This is insane. They don't investigate criminals. They investigate people who are investigating crimes. Right. So they went there to get the information to destroy it. Where's Hillary Clinton's la laptop? Where's her, her Blackberries? Oh. Who cares? Hillary Clinton isn't in politics anymore, first of all. And what she did was nowhere near as bad as what Donald Trump did. And third, they have all that information. They know exactly what Hillary Clinton did and all of that stuff because she didn't steal physical documents. She was communicating on a server. She was communicating with people on a private email server, which I believe eventually got turned over to the government or was leaked or something like that. I don't even remember what happened with that now. They're excusing what Hillary did in an effort to excuse what Trump did, is what it seems to me. They were, they were destroyed with hammers. Yes. So. Um, Wiener. Where's Wiener's laptop? Anthony Weiner is who he's talking about. Oh my God, this is insane. It's get this is QAnon stuff now. I wouldn't even know about this if I wasn't so deeply entrenched in QAnon stuff. So Anthony Weiner was a congressman. I I don't remember what level he was, but he had a wife named Huma Abedin. I don't know if they're still married. Probably not. So Anthony Weiner and Huma Abedin were you know together, and I believe Huma Abedin was like. Hillary Clinton's campaign something or other. I don't know. They worked together closely. Well, Anthony Weiner sent some illicit pictures to people that he wasn't supposed to be sending, and he got in a lot of trouble for that. He kept sending pictures to people that, you know, these people just, they didn't want. They did not want these pictures. But he kept sending them, kept sending them, and he eventually got in a lot of trouble for that. I think he got arrested because he took a picture and sent it to somebody, and his kid was sitting in the bed next to him asleep when he took the picture. So anyways, they arrest Anthony Weiner, and I think he lost his position in Congress. Well, here's where QAnon comes in, okay? QAnon claims that when the police went to arrest him, no evidence for this, of course, they found his laptop there, okay? And his laptop had videos of Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton performing satanic rituals on kids there because Hillary Clinton is a high priestess in the Church of Satan. Just complete delusion, complete nonsense. None of it is true at all, obviously. Hillary Clinton is not a member of the Church of Satan, but, you know, facts don't matter to these people. They'll believe anything. They will believe anything. So that's why old Rick Wiles is asking about Anthony Weiner's laptop. They also made a bunch of claims like the, the police that showed up and found the laptop eventually checked out, basically, for lack of a better term. They checked out after seeing what was on it and blah, blah, blah. It's all just complete nonsense. Um, Weiner, where's... He got charged with transmitting obscene material to an underaged girl and he pled guilty to it. Right, there you go. He kept doing it. Like, it, he was sending this stuff to people, like, nonstop, and I'm glad he finally got in trouble for it. Like, you can't do that kind of shit, you know? It, it's just wrong. Wiener, where's Wiener's laptop? Somewhere. Anthony Wiener, where is it? Somewhere in the bowels of the FBI. Do you think so? I don't. Just complete nonsense. Everything that they're saying here, it's all nonsense, man.
think it even exists anymore, Doc. You think it's been shredded? Of course. And melted? Of course. And, and blown into dust? Absolutely. They destroy the evidence. They get it. They destroy it. They make sure that nobody ever sees it. That's what they were doing. Donald Trump had the binder. And so all the... Yeah, no basis for any of this. Like, they just believe this with no evidence whatsoever. But, you know, here we are. They, they espouse it anyways. It's time that uh, the National Archives has been going through all these records and everything. They were looking for one thing. The binder. Thing only. The binder. That's what this is all about. And so then they narrowed it down. That it had to be in the Trump residence itself. Yes. That, these people are insane, dude. They're insane. When I say the Trump residence, the, where President Trump lives within yes. Mar-a-Lago. Yes. He has a suite up there, a 3,000 square right. foot suite up there and everything. You would think that his private residence would be the most private place for a former president. You just would not go in the, the private home of a former right. president. You wouldn't go into his bedroom and go through his wife's clothes. You would if he stole nuclear documents, which is, in fact, what he did. Well, I wouldn't, and Rick Wiles wouldn't, but the FBI certainly would if they had a search warrant, and that is exactly what happened. But he's got to turn Trump into a victim. He's got to be a victim in this guy's mind. Which they did. Right. They searched everything. And anything that they found that was of use to them, any dirt that they could find, anything that they thought that could be dirt, they took it. Okay, and what Don is there any evidence of that at all? Is there any evidence that they took dirt on Donald Trump? I didn't hear anything about them taking dirt on Trump. Donald Trump is also has implied is we don't know what they planted. Yes, and we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But the main so. thing to know is that they were after the binder that has the evidence of FBI criminal activity. Okay, that's the main thing he wants us to believe, but there's absolutely no reason to believe this whatsoever. In, in Crossfire, Crossfire Hurricane, the, the counterintelligence operation that the FBI set up to destabilize Donald Trump back in 2016. Actually, it was intended to look into why he has all of these Russian friends that he and his campaign officials talk to constantly. And 17. Uh, the intelligence agencies running a, a PSYOPs campaign against the sitting president of the United States. Right. A PSYOP campaign? What, what were they doing to run a PSYOP campaign against... A president. I don't understand. Now, as new details about the uh, raid earlier this week on the Trump uh, uh, residence at Mar-a-Lago, um, Eric Trump uh, had an exclusive interview with Daily Mail, and he revealed some information that uh, hasn't been heard yet. Eric Trump revealed FBI agents, and listen to this, refused to hand over the search warrant for their raid on Mar-a-Lago and kicked an attorney off the property. Simply untrue. They are required to hand over the search warrant before doing the search. They cannot legally do that. Of course, Eric Trump would make himself and his dad out to be the victim. That doesn't surprise me even a little bit, but that's completely fabricated. He said this in a new incisive account of the money operation at the Florida estate. Speaking to the Daily Mail, the former president's son said the 30 agents who arrived at the property asked staff to turn security cameras off, but they refused. He also great show us the video said that the attorney was forced to stand at the end of the Mar-a-Lago driveway while the team searched inside and allegedly used safe crackers to break into his father's safe. Now, he called the raid another coordinated attack on his father, Donald Trump, and insisted there is no way President Joe Biden was kept in the dark about the search. OK, you can speculate all you want, but government officials have said Joe Biden was in the dark and had no idea. He found out when everyone else did. He was watching the TV. Aside from that, I find it fascinating that they, they got safe crackers to break into the safe. That is really, really interesting to me. I love that. I mean, they should be granted access to the safe anyways. And they, I would be willing to bet they probably asked them to open the safe for them. And when they refused, that's when they tried to crack it. I just love everything about that.
I love that they they cracked it. Yeah, safe crackers. You mean locksmiths? That's a good point. They're probably locksmiths rather than safe crackers. Although you know, it's Donald Trump's safe at his mansion. I have to imagine they would need the the best of the best locksmiths to be able to break into that thing. I would think, right? The latest explosive account comes with the Department of Justice facing mounting pressure to explain what grounds they had for the search. Eric said that his father's lawyer, Christina Bob, was forced to stand at the end of the Mar-a-Lago driveway throughout the raid. There's 30 agents. That checks out. They didn't want anybody getting involved or messing with things or moving anything or any of that. Here, he recalled of the Monday search in a phone call with Daily Mail. They told our lawyer, you can, you have to leave the property right now. Turn off all security cameras. They would not give her the search warrant, he claimed. So that he can claim that all he wants, but I'm 100% sure they gave him the search warrant. They were doing this above board. They would not not give him a search warrant when they showed up. That's ridiculous. They showed it to her from about 10 feet away. They would not give her a copy of the search warrant. Now, went on to say it's all a coordinated attack with the FBI, the former president's son added, insisting once again that the raid was approved by President Biden. Do you think that the FBI director is going to raid the former president's house, especially a house, as you know, uh, kind of world-renowned as Mar-a-Lago is in a place as public as Mar-a-Lago is without getting the approval of President Biden? Why would they get the approval of Biden? He had nothing to do with it. This was entirely a Department of Justice thing. Uh, Eric, question. Yeah, because Biden's uh, trying to keep his son and himself out of prison. That's right. So for the crooked business deals they did with the communist China and corrupt Ukrainian officials. Dude, he really does live in like a, delusion, a delusional reality, completely delusional reality. Uh, so uh, the search warrant, if we saw the search warrant, maybe the search warrant is actually going to state the binder. So who has the search warrant right now? Supposedly Donald Trump has a... a Yes, Donald Trump absolutely most definitely has the search warrant. And eventually, just a few days after this aired, remember this came out on, I think, August 10th, just a few days after it aired, Donald Trump leaked the search warrant to Breitbart, including the names of the FBI agents, effectively doxing the FBI agents and their families. There is no bottom to Donald Trump. There is no moral low that he will not stoop to. Trump is one of the most morally depraved people alive, in my opinion. He doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. So, anyway, we don't have to wonder. We know now what the search warrant was for. And actually, let me see if I can find the search warrant. The Department of Justice moved to declassify it or to release it to the public or whatever, but like I said, it didn't matter. Trump leaked it to Breitbart anyway. Oh, it was under the Espionage Act. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. He was being investigated under the Espionage Act. I totally forgot. And for obstruction of justice, they feared he was going to destroy the documents. And one more thing. I don't remember what it was. Uh, it was not for any of the shit that they claimed it was. That's insane. A copy of the search warrant. But he hasn't come out with it yet. No. Um, but why not? Why? What's so secret about the search warrant? What's so, I mean, it was it. Well, it's, you know, it could jeopardize investigations. And for that reason, the Department of Justice absolutely never, ever, ever releases search warrants. I mean, the other person is more than welcome to, but they never do. In this case, they decided to, interestingly enough. But before they even got a chance, Trump released it himself. So. Issued by a judge, right? It should be public record, right? We're talking about the president of the United States. No, it shouldn't be public record unless the person wants to make it public record. Now, Trump chose to make it public record, so fine. And, and the FBI, yeah. This is all for Trump's safety and privacy. It's not, you know, to cover up anything for the Department of Justice or whatever. I find it so interesting that they're, like, making it out like the Department of Justice is trying to cover something up by not releasing it. I'd be proud to publish yeah, the search this is, warrant. This is know, what we do we for do a it, living. We do it right. Yeah. So now Eric Trump went on to say that by not turning off the security cameras, Eric said that they saw the FBI raiding areas of the property that they shouldn't have been. 
Donald Trump lamented Wednesday that the FBI blocked his lawyers from the property during the raid and suggested that agents may have planted evidence. Okay, there's no reason to believe that. And obviously Donald Trump at this point has admitted to having all of the documents that they found anyways, so I don't even see the point in making that claim. But aside from that, they did actually coordinate with Secret Service because since Donald Trump is an ex-president, he has Secret Service protection for the rest of his life, and they had to coordinate with the Secret Service to do the search. So the Secret Service basically just let them in when they arrived because that's required by law. Because how would you know? How would you know that they didn't plant evidence? You know, if you believe that they did plant evidence, you're going to have to battle that out in court like everybody else. I've been through the court system. I had to go through it and argue with my lawyer just like every other person on planet Earth or every other person in the United States. We all have to argue all these things in court. This isn't something you argue in the court of public opinion. I'm sorry. It's just not going to work. You, you, have, have, to, you have to trust that the FBI is honest. Right. And I don't know anybody that can say that they believe the FBI is honest. Not today. And so, Now, FBI agents were in the 128 Florida uh, room, Florida estate, for nine hours on Monday. Jesus Christ, 128 rooms in this mansion? What does he even do with all those rooms? Seriously, why does he even have them? What is the point of having 128 rooms? My God, dude. I thought they got there in the evening. They I got did there too. at 10 a.m. Right, they were there all day long, with 30 agents roaming through the entire 3,000 square foot private quarters. The investigators searched the master bedroom known as the Versailles Room, which Melania Trump renovated two years ago. They rummaged through the former First Lady's wardrobe and searched through clothing, according to the New York Post. Look, that's what the Department of Justice does. That's what the police do. That's what law enforcement does. They rummage through things if they have a search warrant. If Trump doesn't like that people do that, he had the power to change it so that they don't operate that way. When he was president, he could have done all kinds of stuff. Did he give a shit about people being mistreated back when he was president? No, he didn't. He didn't give a shit. And now, suddenly, that he's the target of these investigations and stuff, now he gives a shit. For the record, you know, I, I have no problem with how they did this. Like, search warrants are, are necessary sometimes for the safety of society. And in this case, it was a completely above-board search warrant, so I have no problem with it. The agents also searched a separate office and safe in a locked basement storage room in which 15 cardboard boxes of material from the White House were stored, the paper said. Now, those 15 bo cardboard boxes, uh, the National Archives office, they were fully aware of those boxes. They, they were not secret. It's not like he was hiding. Don't come down here to the basement right. and look at these boxes. Those were the boxes that they've been going back and forth over the past, what is it, six, nine months about materials that belong at the archives. And, you know, there are some items that belong to the president, you know, like every president. Hey, Doc. A 3,000 square foot residence. That's not a big house. No, 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 no. He got it confused. 3,000 square foot private quarters. Private quarters. Not the total residence. Mar-a-Lago is 62,500 square feet. Just 3,000 feet are, are the, uh, the private residence where he lives and sleeps and eats and whatever else. Not, not I mean, it, it, Florida. I mean, it, and that's part of a resort, a 128-room resort. It's, right. it's a massive, big, beautiful resort. He's got a small part that is his private residence. Right. 3,000 square feet is not a huge home. It's not. Yes, it is. That's nice. That's pretty decent. 3,000 square feet isn't a huge home. Are you kidding? That's massive. I mean, it's not like obscenely massive, but it's plenty big. Seems big to me. I have an 800 square foot place. Technically, I think it's 880 on paper, but it feels more like 750 or 800. I have never lived in a 3,000 square foot place in my life. That's pretty big. That's huge. Mansion. That's the average size of homes. No, it isn't. No. The average size of a home is like 1,200 to 1,500 square feet. 3,000 square feet is massive. 30 FBI agents were in it for nine hours? 
Well, first of all, it takes forever to search some things. And second, I believe they searched the entire resort because if I remember correctly, the classified documents were in a shed down by the pool. Uh, flipping cushions, going through Melania's dresses and shoes and everything. What, did they remove the tiles from the floor? They probably should have. I think how much you would look at in nine hours with 30 agents inside a 3,000 square foot residence. In safe crackers. They you brought know, in you safe know what crackers. it tells me? They couldn't find the binder. Yeah. No, they found it. They found what they needed. Definitely, they did. They couldn't find the binder. He thinks because they searched the whole residence, it means that they didn't find what they were looking for. No. They had the right to search the entire place. They were looking for documents that he took from the government, and they found what they were looking for. Just because they wanted to search the entire area does not mean they didn't find what they were looking for. They went there for the binder, and they couldn't find it. Um, I know somebody that uh, years ago, um, what, he, <laughs> what he did, uh, he had a safe in his bedroom, and um, he had a, a, a brilliant plan on how to deal with, with thieves. So he actually left the important things out in the open, the, the valuable things. He put it out right. in the open, and he had this big safe in his bedroom. And the thieves broke into his home and overlooked the valuable things that were out in the open and grabbed the safe and took off with and it. took off and went to Mexico with it and cracked the safe in Mexico and when they opened it up there was a piece of paper in the safe and it said my plan worked there was nothing in the safe right? I think Donald Trump did the same thing they went there looking for the binder they can't find it Okay, I have no idea what he's even talking about. Like, none of this makes any sense. I'm very confused. He has it somewhere in plain sight. They so, couldn't find it. So are you saying they did not find it? They didn't find it. Because if they... I'm honestly surprised that he would say such a thing, because they definitely walked out of there with documents. Had they'd be crowing about it, wouldn't they? They would. They'd be crowing about it. They did take documents. They took documents. So this video that we're watching right now came out two days after the, the search, the FBI search on his home. I'm honestly confused. Like, did they miss the part where they walked out with documents, like boxes of documents? Did they miss that? Because that definitely happened. They needed to put him in prison. They would have been crowing that yes, they, they found, found classified they found documents. They found the dirt. They did. They did. They found classified documents. They wouldn't have been there for nine hours if they found it. They didn't find it. Like, everything the guy says is just built on speculation and nonsense. It's all speculation and nonsense. They gathered up everything else that they could get. Hope, they'll go take it all back and dump it on the table and see, what can we get here? What do we have here that we could arrest him for? Well, that's fair enough. If he did something that's worthy of arrest, then definitely he, he should be arrested for it, seems to me, right? These people are insane. That's what they're doing right now. Th that story said that the FBI... Oh, it's just that they else. That they uh, did this in a way not to create a circus, not to, <laughs> to, to get publicity. That's correct. They didn't actually. Donald Trump was... The, nobody would have even known that this happened if Trump hadn't told everybody that this happened. Trump was the one that drew attention to everything. And it didn't work out right. Seriously? 30 armed agents, machine guns at the home of the President of the United States, and you didn't think there would be any publicity about it? No, they were desperate. You know, if Trump hadn't said a word, no one would have known. 
I mean, there were Trump supporters that stand outside his house 24-7, basically, and talk about how much they love him and everything. And they saw the cars going in, but they had no idea what those cars were doing there or why they were there or who it was or anything. For all they knew, you know, Trump could have made anything up. He could have said, we had somebody fall and it was a foreign dignitary and so we needed people there to help him get better and get on an airplane back to his home country or something. Like, Trump could have made something up that would have been believable. Trump is the one that blew the lid off of this intentionally. Get the binder. And they are worried. They're worried that people are asking questions. And right now, True News is asking questions to the FBI. Was it about the binder? Were you looking for the evidence that incriminates the FBI and other intelligence agency officials who carried out psyops operations against it, it's okay, God, there's so much wrong with this, but it's weird that he is now asking that question when for the past hour, he's been stating it as a fact. Donald Trump, for a number of years, who pushed the fake Putin hacked the election narrative on the American people. Who that was not fake, and nobody claimed Putin hacked the election. People claimed, rightly, it was investigated and found without a shadow of a doubt that Russia interfered with the election. That is factual. Lied for years telling the world that Donald Trump was a Russian stooge? Or is that what you're worried about, FBI? You know why people think this? You know why people believe that Trump is a Russian stooge? Let me show you why. You guys may not remember this. It's been a while. This is Rachel Maddow talking about Donald Trump and why we have questions about what's happening with Putin and Trump and Russia. All right, first, deep breath. <laughs> Not that deep. Uh, this was a big day. Let's just talk about uh, what has just happened. Um, and let's talk about it with the full and complete expectation that more of it may yet happen while we are talking tonight. Um, this is from 2018, mid-July 2018. This is right after Donald Trump went to Helsinki to meet Putin and do a joint press conference with him or, or whatever else. And things got weird at that press conference. Uh, things are at a boil. Uh, things are going, going fast now. This is a time when... Everybody needs to pay attention. Here's why we have covered this story so intensely. Since it first became clear that there was something wrong and illicit and unexplained about the relationship between this particular foreign adversary and the unlikely rise of this unlikely politician who shocked everyone by winning the last US presidential election. I mean, there was no explicable reason why, as a presidential candidate, he would step with such excruciating care to avoid ever saying anything remotely negative or critical about Russia and its president. There was no explicable reason why he would dig out of the vault a campaign chairman who had not worked in American politics for more than a generation, but he had spent more than the past decade doing Vladimir Putin's political bidding overseas in the former Soviet Union. That's right. Paul Manafort worked for Vladimir Putin and then came to work for Donald Trump's campaign. That's weird, huh? There was no explicable reason to name a guy quite recently and quite literally caught up in a Russian spy ring in New York as one of his five foreign policy advisors, when this was a guy nobody had ever, ever heard of. There was no explicable reason why he wouldn't brag that on the day of one of the early Republican presidential primary debates, that very day, he had signed a letter of intent to build the tallest building in Russia. So those are some of the strange coincidences that happened, right? It was very clear that Russia had interfered in the U.S. election at this point in 2018. Everybody knew that that was a fact. And Donald Trump goes up on stage with Putin and this happens. People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I have great confidence in my intelligence people. But uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. And what he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have 
the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. So they had indicted 12 Russians for interfering with the U.S. election on Donald Trump's behalf is what happened. And Putin denied any involvement and then invited U.S. investigators over to Russia to talk to them or whatever else. Uh, The whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe anybody actually believed any of this. And it seemed pretty obvious to me and everybody else that Donald Trump was very clearly in Putin's pocket or vice versa. Something. Something was completely off about this situation. That's why we believed that Trump was being paid off by Putin. That's why we believed there was something up. And hacked the election narrative on the American people who lied for years telling the world that Donald Trump was a Russian stooge? Or is that what you're worried about, FBI? Donald Trump was a Russian stooge. Knowingly or unknowingly, who knows? He was a Russian stooge. 